Peter, I'm coming to you live from my F-250 right now. It looks like it. I love it. <laughs> Dude, welcome to the sound booth. <laughs> the sound booth. Where, where are you exactly? I'm at my girlfriend's art gallery. She's okay. got an op- She's got an open studio on Saturdays, and I'm making it my new religion to be here every Saturday for four hours to do my looping show. That's right. Is, is that in Oakland or Berkeley? I can't remember. Downtown Oakland FM Gallery. Oh, nice. If any of our If any of our listeners are Bay based. Then uh, every Saturday from one to four at FM Gallery Oakland, I'm gonna do a uh, I'm gonna do a a little looping performance, casual, improvised. You know, just kind of feel the, just try to pull some shapes from the void. How how about not uh, check this out? I gotta go check this out. Yeah, you got to man. It's nice every first Friday too. It's big. Okay. Like it'll be a big event next first fr- next Friday is gonna be a big event here, and the studio's open all night. And then the live stream will be on my Instagram at Devin Carson. So, you know, every okay, Saturday from tight. one to four Pacific standard time, you can come check that out, but that's where I'm hanging at right now. Hey, well, that's actually a nice segue into what we want to talk about today, which is music and specifically is rock and roll dead. This is like a topic that came to my mind because within the course of a week, I listened to a couple of podcasts. One was the fifth column. We're just off the cuff. The guys randomly said, oh, and rock and roll is dead. Aha, of course rock and roll is dead. You know, and then they, they moved on with it. I, I just have heard that from some people this week. And I was like, okay, well, is rock and roll dead? And this is something that you and I met through, you know, musical underground worlds. And sure. you're still very much in the music world. I'm not so much anymore, but I still, I still play guitar. You, you know, I, <laughs> when I sit down to write a song, to me, it is still like, kind of rock and roll even if it's more like folky or whatever it's like i'm writing a yeah. rock song yeah at some level you know yeah but i instinctively get the premise that rock and roll is dead just because it seems to me you know i've looked into this in terms of statistics a little bit so i do want to get into that and like actually like get some numbers on the question of is rock and roll dead Mm. But like intuitively, that's the least. That is the least rock and roll. Oh God! It's it's it. it's so is. <laughs> well, okay. So so let's. To, I mean, I don't even know what the case exactly is, but to lay out the case a little bit for what like these guys might have been saying when people say this off the cuff. It's like, you know, hip hop is huge. If you look anywhere, like you hear hip hop music, you hear EDM, you hear like electronic music, you hear like AI generated music, you hear like all of these different things whenever you're, you're dipping your toe into it. And of course, like pop music, right? Mm-hmm. It is pretty rare that you turn on a radio station or watch a movie or something and like an actual fucking rock song comes on. You know what I mean? Like a Led Zeppelin callback type of band that's playing rock and roll. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, modern bands right now, they're still huge, like Spoon, Wilco, The National. I mean, there, there are still a lot of bands out there, many of whom I still like listen to. But mm-hmm. even those bands that I just named, those dudes are all in like their 40s and 50s. So maybe I'm not even making a great case. I, I'm not too sure. Uh, there's the like Viagra Boys that like had a huge album last year. So there is still like rock music out there, but it's just not permeating the culture like it used to. Okay. I don't know if that's true. First of all, I want to know what fucking nerds you were listening to and where they come from, man. Were these tech people that were fucking telling you that rock and roll is dead? Were you listening to some fucking uh, Twitter Twitter employees, man? (laughs) Well, do you know that, like, the fifth column to those guys? No, they do like political uh-huh. commentary. They're in like their late 40s, early 50s, I assume. I'm not too sure. Uh, they seem like guys who would really like rock and roll music. That's what they seem like. And so they they had that like okay. boomer, boomer Gen X or like rock and roll is dead, uh, you know. Right, right. Uh, which uh, is like, okay. it is a very boomer thing because they say that about everything, right? Oh, it's dead, you know. Yeah. The, the millennials killed it or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I think that makes a little bit of sense to me because I would think that people who are of a certain age – would not be tapped into young people culture enough to really know if anything's alive or dead. Like they're yeah. just like, you know, they're just out, they're just floating through the pop cultural ether and like, you know, absorbing shit through the skin. You feel me? Like, I think if you like, yeah, in a certain way, the the spirit of that type of rock and roll is kind of dead. But I got two things to say about that. One. Okay. I've noticed that the music that Gen Z is creating and vibing with is messier 
louder, more punk influenced. I would say there's like an element of like intentional DIYness. Yeah. And uh, like a, I, I, you see it in the fashion culture of young people right now, where obviously there's a huge callback to like the mid '90s, early mid '90s, with the way that young people are dressing. I think their music is reflecting that as well. There's like a frustration in the music that's manifesting in a lot of different ways. Maybe not in such a direct way as it did in the '70s, '80s, '90s, where I think everything was a little bit more focused. We're living in such a broad time. There's so many more influences to the things that you do now. But I see like young people seem like they're just about ready to start making like rock music again because I could feel the the bitterness, the angstiness. They've gone. They you know Gen Z's had a pretty tough go, man. As mm -hmm. as like a 20 year span kind of goes, it's been. Not a fucking great ride. I mean, you and I caught the 90s, which maybe was the yeah. last... Last you know, peak of last, humanity. <laughs> yeah, dude, just like the last coast. You know, like the car was already on the freeway and we were just coasting until like the mid 2000s, you know. But um, so, yeah, first of all, I think that young people are maybe not making rock and roll in the traditional vein, but the energy is there for it there's a rawness and a distortedness that's happening in that cultural kind of the young people cultural scene right now that seems like it's um it's percolating exhibit number two is i don't know if you've noticed this but a lot of the newer hip-hop acts it's fucking nuts because there's a vocal style and a production style that throws me straight back to like Blink 182 and like weird shit that you would never imagine hearing. Like, there's a new Steve Lacey track that's out that sounds very kind of Blink 182. There's like a not as polished, but the vocal inflections are really similar. It's like a very it bothers me because it's very I it's a very juvenile sound when it came out. Yeah, and there's a couple other acts that are like weaving like weird like post rock and roll like callbacks into their music which i find interesting and then my exhibit three is my gut feeling which is that we're i'm gonna start actually writing it's funny because i'm actually gonna start writing a rock and roll record this year i just finished writing the record that i'm uh i'm gonna record later this year but i want to start working on a rock and roll record because i think that it's like been asleep for long enough that it is the next wave like that's I, interesting okay every time i listen to uh, every time i watch guardians of the galaxy which is uh, not like an amazing amount of times but you know like quite a few times in the last like five years that music is so dimed it's so good it's so good and it's so good oh, i'm not gonna be better that i don't know Guardians of the Galaxy is awesome. It's like, you know, it's set in space, but the, the, the one of the conceits is that the main character has a Walkman that he took with him from Earth. And so there's all these scenes where they're in a spaceship and it's like Almond Brothers playing or something like yeah. that. And the juxtaposition against <clears throat> those two things. Oh, I like, like that. Yeah. Yeah, of like a future setting, but with this like music, like inarguably timeless music from the 70s, it creates this weird synthetic energy that feels really alive and i think people are ready for it. i think people are ready for like a queen or a zeppelin or somebody with like big riff driven songs to come through again well so let me uh I, let me read yeah, this to yeah, you please, so, so please. this is an article from 2017 it was when chuck berry died and the article, this is in Forbes, uh, is titled, Rock and Roll is Dead. No, really, this time it is. So here's a quote. Chuck Berry's death this past weekend is a poignant reminder that the form he invented in the 1950s has evolved out of its existence. Then they quote some music critic. Uh, when people talk about rock music, they have a vision in their heads of a four or five piece band smoking cigarettes with leather, leather jackets and tattoos. A band that comes right. from nowhere and takes over the culture. That's unquestionably over. There's some truth to that. But, yeah, I think that's true. But I mean, you know, the, the the one piece that jumps out at me from this quote that's like, that's wrong, is that like, I don't think that a rock band has to come out of nowhere and take over the culture. That has exactly. nothing to do with the rock and roll actually. Is. That no. seems like something a critic would say, not someone who like 
performs rock and roll music. You know what I mean? For, yeah, it for, like a, like min, older, for many reasons. Would say. <laughs> yeah, it, it, like it, it totally is. Like, like a psychologically elderly person. Would one, say. <laughs> no one takes over the culture anymore. That's like, or you that's do if, if you do, you do for five minutes, and then you know that's yeah. then people scroll past it and it's, it's done. And two, you just don't need to. Like some of my favorite rock bands of all time are teeny, teeny, tiny bands, mm-hmm. and that makes mm-hmm. it more rock and roll. You know what I mean? Totally. Let Zeppelin like gets points deducted because they're so huge. You know what I mean? Yeah. If they were more underground, yeah. that would be more rock and roll. So right. I have a lot of problems with that. But I also like to me, my favorite rock bands, my picture of them, I don't know if any of them, I have a picture of them smoking cigarettes, wearing leather jackets with the tattoos. Like that's Green Day or something. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's like a punk that's a punk aesthetic almost. Yeah. So like this guy, but this this is what's so kind of funny is that everyone has their own vision of rock and roll in their minds and it's so informed by the bands they uh-huh. listen to when they're 18 years old the music was so meaningful to them. So that's kind of like part of this. Tangential to that, though, I do want to say that there's something weird happening in the culture right now where now you see this weird phenomenon on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram where highly technically proficient people are just playing a guitar solo riff and that is a 30 second clip and then that's it. That's the thing. It's not in the context of a band or a larger song. And like, that's simply because it's cool to be technically proficient and it always kind of will be even when ai can make music so easily out of nothing um there is that kind of like coolness to being able to play a super epic you know rock ballad thing and I, that's not rock and roll, but that is an element of rock and roll that has permeated the culture and continues to thrive in a new way that it yeah. never has before, where someone playing like a little riff in their basement, now they can have like three million views on that little thing. And that's not like, right. that, that is kind of playing rock and roll. I mean, it's, it's just different. I mean, so rock music has continued to flourish out in the wider culture in weird ways like that. Just It's just floating under the surface right now man it's just a fucking it's just a shark right under the surface because yeah Yeah. hip-hop was the what hip-hop and electronic music just completely grabbed our fascination for the last 20 years but like the energy of rock and roll is an energy that is fucking endemic to american culture it's blue jeans it's fuck you it's like cool you know and maybe the guy's like because in his head he's like oh well leather jackets and smoking cigarettes it's like that's cool and it's like yeah nah, it's not it, that's what you think cool is but rock and roll is just cool and you yeah. listen to something you're like god damn, that's fucking cool man or that's intense you know there, there's it's an energy that is gonna get recycled into a million different shapes and forms because think about zeppelin dude what a bunch what <laughs> with the absolute opposite of a rock band, like Plant with his like long flowing hair. They were like nerds. Was, like, yeah. They were like nerds. Video game geeky kind of, nerds. Like, yeah, and like it was like back then they called it hyper masculinity, but we would think of it as like gay <laughs> now. You know what I mean? Which I think is very <laughs> ironic. And it's like, nah, it's just the tunes, dude. The tunes just kick ass. It doesn't matter what the people look like. It's just kick-ass tunes so there, there's something that i think that you were referencing earlier about you know what's co- like coming back and there's like a craving for it i think that it is just this, this sense of rawness and that yeah. is always going to be missing from certain genres like hip-hop yeah. because it's like hip-hop yeah. inherently is kind of overproduced Absolutely, rock is yeah. kind of at its best when it's not overproduced i, I mean like mm-hmm. for example i don't know if you saw the movie uh batman the new like batman movie I only I watched so, yeah. like 20 minutes of it. It was like three hours. I couldn't do it. But like <laughs> it, it has uh, that uh, Nirvana song, something in, in the way that, that mm. plays and it, and it kicks in. And it's it's so raw and mm-hmm. like nothing else would have gotten that emotion out of those scenes mm-hmm. that they're trying to capture if it wasn't rock and roll music at like a very raw state of a dude and his guitar. You know what I mean? Like dude, that, how, that is how timeless. How are we going to navigate this dystopian future without sick Blade Runner fucking like rock and roll and metal, dude? Like, dude, EDM and and hip hop and soul music are tight, but they're not going to get us through the dark times ahead, dude. We're going to need sick guitar solos on neon guitars. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Okay, so that's my final word. (laughs) <laughs> well, let me let me end on some statistics. The least rock and roll thing to do. 
So Men, we have to. I know, I know. Well, <laughs> some of this is kind of interesting. I haven't done more than Googling this for like five seconds. So, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I do need to fact check this more. But in any case, run, run, run the stats. This, this is stats. music festivals from 2021 worldwide. 38% was EDM electronic, 28% indie rock, 9% hip hop, 8% mm-hmm. pop, 7% folk. 5% metal, 4 country, 1% jazz. So, rock and roll. Did all of that I, add up to 100%? Uh, I don't know if I read all of them, but <laughs> I, I, I think it does. This this is also, by the way, this is this headphonesaddict.com. So, you know, I'm, I'm not relying on... Dude, you know, a, trusted, a trusted journalist. This, this is source, the best that I could do. For a 30 second Google, but but here we go. This also says uh, <laughs> popularity rankings, music genres, 2021. Uh, pop, rock, 90s, 80s, soundtrack, hip hop, rap, R&B, dance, 70s, soul blues. That's like the ranking apparently of what's what's popular out there. This is worldwide too. This isn't just the U.S. Um, Sounds about right. Yeah, there, there's some more here, but like if just like running down these statistics, and yeah, there's this is this is consistent throughout years too. Um, rock and roll is absolutely definitely not dead, which is just interesting by the by the numbers. If you were to see it like dead, <laughs> you would see it at like you know. You're killing it right now, though, by reading these numbers. <laughs> you are killing rock and roll right now, Peter. By well, reading off these statistics. <laughs> well, I, I, I think, I think no, because it's not a rock and roll no, thing to do. Not, but it's also just kind of like, it's kind of like, some of you, we got to know these things. We got to know these. We things. need to know. No, no, that was that was uncouth of me. We have these it, are necessary statistics. Well, in any case, nothing is cooler than rock and roll being dead. Anyway, right? Very quickly. Do you have any predictions for where music is heading? You've already kind of like dropped that you think that rawness rock and roll at some level is going to come back because there's going to be craving for it i totally agree but i mean kind of beyond that do you have any thoughts for where music is going to head dude i do i think honestly i swear to god and like i thought this uh probably like seven or eight years ago i was seeing soul music like percolate and i was like this is going to be a thing for a minute in the same way that i can just feel i think like classic rock like st- the stylings of classic rock, which is a weird amalgamation of different styles of music. There's jazz elements, there's soul elements, there's rock and roll elements, you know what I mean? There, Everything is kind of, and there's folk, a lot of folk elements to it. I just feel it. I feel it percolating in the culture. I think there's going to be like a resurgence of music like that, that's kind of composed it's very songwritery, but then it's it's intense. There's an intensity to it. There's a narrative to the musical aspect and to the songwriting aspect. I think we're ready for that again. I think we're done. I don't think we're done. I think there's always going to be a place for songs that are literally just a chorus. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Or like even just a phrase. You know, that still is going to serve a purpose in the culture. But I think we're ready to be, I think storytelling is ready to have its have another moment again where we're going to have like, a resurgence of people telling the tale of the last 20 years of madness. That's my, that's my prediction. I saw that just joggles in my brain, a, a tweet I saw the other day, some, some random person just tweeted, white men no longer play 30 minute rock ballads. That's kind of true. That died in the seventies. Yeah. There were so many was, that a, was that a lament or a cheer? Were they? It excited? was just like it was just like I, I think uh you know trying to get some likes on a tweet like a shower, <laughs> observation. Like a sh- just a shower thought. But yeah, for, that that was that was the vibe I got. But it's kind of true because there was like Jethro Tull and Pink Floyd and Gentle Giant and like a million of those bands which I loved you know back in the day. But they they are gone. Like that doesn't seem to be coming back. And with like people's attention spans. I mean, yeah. I have that album, Thick as a Brick, you know, it's two songs, they're both like 20 minutes or whatever. I, I couldn't sit through that right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yes, I also, albums, I couldn't sit through that. There's no way. Nah, <laughs> I think I think the culture at large, too, is like, we've told middle-aged white dudes stories for long enough, you know? And then, like, I think the other thing that's not coming back is, like, tales of dragons and shit that's, like, fucking lord of the rings shit you know what i mean like a lot of classic rock was like yeah ballads about white dude shit 
and then just epic tales about like fantasy books. <laughs> yeah, that's not coming back. I think you're I right. It's coming back. Yeah, yeah, that, that's gone. And unless there's music for like the uh, the video game cultures, because like video games still sell better than movies or music or anything. I, I have no idea what sort of music gets incorporated in the, the video game world, but I mean. Yeah, who knows, man. Anyways, verdict, rock, not dead. Get get out of here. Yeah, get out of here. Totally get agree. Here. And if it dies, then it would just be more cool points for it anyway. So. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. If rock and roll did die, that would be like the most rock and roll thing that could happen to rock and roll. So exactly. I mean, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a Mobius musical experience. Dude, I do have one more thought I have to share. Uh, one thing that will make it so that rock and roll won't ever actually die is just the beauty of the guitar and mm -hmm. the that just the, the the visceral amazing feel of hitting the snare mm -hmm. drum. Things mm -hmm. like that. Like, it's irreplaceable, and it's just fucking fun, you know what I mean? And yeah. guitars to hold and to, like, it's the most intimate instrument when you really just, like, rock out on a guitar or, or bang on some drums. That shit mm -hmm. is, is completely irreplaceable. Maybe someone's, like, right now making some, like, cool, like, little beats on their laptop or whatever the shit people do these days. But, like, mm -hmm. dude, the second you pick up a guitar, you are going to feel that music in a way you're never, you, you can't with anything else. That's 100%. just never going to go away. People are always going to love that because, man, like, guitars are just fucking beautiful and so mm -hmm. fun. Completely agree, my brother.